Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from Duty Microphones, and today's episode is all about how to become a live streamer using gear you may already own. So let's get started. Well, this whole episode is dedicated to live streaming. It doesn't matter if you're a gamer or if you're trying to vlog a live stream event, this is actually gonna get you started, even if your background is in something completely different. Throughout this whole episode, we're gonna be going step-by-step step showing you how to set it up from scratch. We're gonna first start with our audio. We're gonna move into the video and signal routing aspects. We're gonna talk about lighting for audio. And then lastly, we're gonna go into OBS and take a look at all the settings so we get the best picture quality and sound quality for our live stream. So with no further ado, let's go start setting this all up in our living room. So we are here in our living room setup. This is where we're gonna plan to do all of our live streaming from. And all the gear we're gonna have is gear that we've actually already owned here in the studio. And we'll also talk about alternatives that are a lot cheaper than what we're actually using that you can actually purchase readily available like on Amazon or any of the big major dealers. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is audio. We're gonna be using a mic stand. This is very popular for live streamers. And the boom arm that we're gonna be using is the Tonar boom arm because of a special feature that we really are in love with. And that is it has a hanging hook for your headphones. If you're live streaming, it's very important to use headphones and not necessarily these speakers on your computer because you don't want it bleeding into your microphone. And for the microphone we're gonna be using, it's actually the Deity S-Mic2S, which is the same microphone we use for all of our tutorial videos here on this channel. It's also a great microphone if you're a filmmaker to put on your boom. So we're just gonna screw this on because it's 3 8 on the middle of our shock mount. Most boom poles are 3 8 and so is most boom arms meant for uh, these kinds of microphones. And point that at our mouth, position it nice and good so we can actually sit there with our keyboard while we're doing this, almost behind the microphone and get the most amount of rejection so I don't hear all those kind of button clicks. Now for our audio setup to get it into the computer, there's actually two different methods we can talk about. You can do an audio interface. So a lot of people probably own something like this, the Zoom H5. Same thing with this guy. Not only is it a transmitter and a recorder, with the newest firmware, this can also be an audio interface device. This is what we're gonna go with today because we also want that analog limiter built in. In case I rage quit and you know die, I can start screaming and get really angry, but my microphone is not gonna clip. A cheap alternative for people that may not have recorders like this, you could also take a look at something like the VLOV. What's really nice about the VLOV is you can plug it right into your MacBook Pro, use it as your built-in microphone's input, and just use this in OBS. Now you will need to do something about your audio because it will cut off your speakers and you can't plug in a headphone jack at the same time. What you can do is get a headphone splitter or Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth earbuds into your Mac and listen to your audio that way. So now what we're gonna do is actually set up our recorder, which in this case is also doubling as our audio interface device to work with our computer. We're just gonna plug a USB-C cable into the side of this. We're gonna then plug this into the side of our computer using the USB type A port. As you can see, it immediately recognizes what's going on and turns on. We're gonna use a standard XLR cable to go from our microphone into the HDTX. So I'm just gonna plug right in, throw this cable off so it looks nice and clean on our Twitch stream plug right into the back of this microphone. And now I'm gonna address my cords just a little bit. So now that our audio is all set up, let's talk about the video signal. For the video signal for our live stream, we're gonna set this up as if we're doing a game stream. Today's video source is gonna be provided by this little Raspberry Pi box. Why that's really important is really, we just wanna look at something that has an HDMI output that runs audio via the HDMI. So really, if you're doing anything with a console game, you can do this. For those who are doing a live stream setup and are trying to do this with multiple cameras, if you wanna run your audio separately through just your audio interface, that's perfectly fine. For us, we want the audio from our game system in sync, so we're gonna run everything through one cable. To get the Pi though into our system, we're actually gonna use the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Now, this is definitely a specialty item that you guys may not have already in your kit. That's okay, we found an alternative thanks to Epos Vox. He actually found a $35 capture card that's gonna work perfectly fine so you don't need to blow the money on the big giant expensive one. Now we're using Thunderbolt 2.0. You may have a Thunderbolt 3.0 capture card or a USB 3 capture card, but that one that we were talking about earlier, it's USB 2.0. So this is actually a relatively easy thing to do even on older hardware. So let's actually now hook up our little gaming console into there. Now there's two ways to do this. 
You could, of course, just plug it directly into your capture box, and that's perfectly fine. You could game off your OBS screen, but there is a little bit of latency. So if you're doing a platformer, a first-person shooter, that latency could add up, and you may actually experience some kind of lag situation. So what we're gonna actually do is route it to a monitor first, and then route it from the monitor down to the capture card. Yes, of course, we are using the small HD 17-inch $3,500 monitor for a Raspberry Pi but it's because we had it already laying around and it has a key feature that we wanna talk about. And I can show it to you on this smaller AC monitor that a lot of camera operators probably already own. And that is it has an HDMI in and an HDMI out. So we can loop our system into the input, loop it out of the output, and then that will actually go to our capture card. In this case, the small HD has all that and it's already set up. And if you are using a television and you don't have like some kind of camera monitor that has a loop through, you can also get an HDMI splitter and that allows you to go to your television and to OBS at the same time. Let's now talk about lighting. It's really important that we actually light because we're using our built-in webcam. So we gotta add some light to make sure the white balance on the camera is set perfect. Now, for a lot of people out there that own Canon or Fuji cameras, a new update just came out that allows you to turn those into webcams. So really go check that out if you're one of those operators. Sadly though, both those pieces of firmware are for Windows only and we're here on a Mac. So we're gonna just stick with our webcam. For the actual light, we're gonna be using a stand that we got off Amazon. It's 3 8 which allows us to really kind of be pretty versatile with our mounting options. And this Aperture F7 allows for 3 8 spuds to go into this ball mount. We're gonna set our light up here on the right side and drop it just a little bit right there so it matches our webcam. Now we're actually adding it to this side of our frame instead of this side because we don't want the shadow of the microphone cast all across our body. At the end of the day, we want the webcam to see us, not a bunch of shadows. We are gonna also use the heavy piece of diffusion because it's a pretty light, small little light and we don't want harsh shadows. We don't want the hard light, we want that nice soft wrap around. By positioning it here, I'm also putting it on the same side as I'm looking for my game. So as I turn and actually look at my game, my webcam is seeing light evenly on both sides of my space because technically it's coming from the direction that I'm looking. Now let's actually power this little light on. And as you can see, I've got no shadows on my face from my microphone. Boom shadows are not just for film sets anymore. They're also for your gaming setup. So we've got our Raspberry Pi coming into OBS now. And as you can see, We've got it added as a video source. If I click on this, go to video capture device, we've already brought it in as essentially that. And if I wanna take a look at my settings here, I'm just gonna double click it. And as you can see, we're bringing it in as a standard definition OBS project. And if I go into my system settings, down here in audio, you can see our aux and mic one setup is the black magic. We're gonna to need to bring in a secondary microphone though, and that's the one that I'm talking into, and that's gonna be the HDTX. So if I go to microphone number two, bring in my HDTX right there. And as soon as I hit okay, you see we've got two levels of audio here. One is the one that I'm currently talking into, and I'm currently really blowing this one out. And the second one is my game audio. So I'm gonna bring this one way down. I'm gonna bring it in so that I'm talking right in there, that negative 12 dB level, and this is really where you wanna live with OBS. The problem with OBS is if you hit negative 6 dB, technically you've already clipped. There's a whole video if you want to find out more about why OBS is fickle, it's right up here on this card. But for the most part, that is exactly what you want. The other thing I've done here is the audio coming out of the Raspberry Pi is actually hitting somewhere around the negative 35 range. Because it's sound effects, because it's music, it's a fuller frequency spectrum than my human voice. So I actually want my human voice to punch right through all that kind of stuff. My dialogue, my voice, whenever I'm talking, I want the punch through above the game because a lot of this kind of stuff when you are trying to do live stream, you're trying to show what, what makes it live and interactive is the person you're interacting with. And a lot of personality needs to come through there. People aren't really watching necessarily for the gameplay. I think a lot of people watch because they like the person playing the game. And what we're gonna do now is set up a camera so they actually see that person. So I'm gonna go into plus do another live video capture. I'm gonna set this one up and I'm gonna call this my webcam. And I'm gonna hit okay. 
and I'm actually gonna literally choose my FaceTime camera. And there I am. What's going on, everybody? I'm gonna drop this down in. I'm gonna adjust my frame and whatnot. Because remember, be mindful if you are playing it in a different direction, put it on the other side if you need to. That way you kind of look like you're looking at your gameplay. I'm gonna hit the little lock icon on both my settings. So when I'm live, nothing will get adjusted. That's also really important. Lastly, if you can go down into your audio, right click, filters. And in my audio filters, you can see I've got a compressor, expander, gain. If you're not getting enough levels, you can do it right there. If you have a limiter or invert polarity, noise gate, all that kind of stuff, really super important stuff. But you can also see I've got this guy, VST number two X plugin. And this allows me to bring in any of my VST plugins I may already have installed on my computer. Something that I may have like from Audacity, Pro Tools, any of that stuff. But as you can see, I'm hitting that negative 12. I'm not gonna be clipping my audio. That's my safety precaution. So if I wanted to, I could now sit there and play any kind of game. And all I need to do now is just hit either start recording and I could record all my gameplay. I could edit this later and then drop that into something like uh, YouTube or Vimeo or any other place that wanna host my videos. Or I could also hit start streaming and that would allow me to stream it all the way to YouTube and whatnot. And if you wanna learn how to do that, we'll just go into settings stream, and then you have a whole host of different options. So if you wanted to go to something like YouTube, if Twitch, Mixer, all that kind of stuff, Facebook Live, if you wanna get the setup, all you have to do is hit link right here. That's gonna take you to your stream key, input your stream key, and you're done. Now you're up and running, hit start, and you can get started. Now, if you wanna do things like graphics and all that stuff, there's channels for that. This was just to show you how to get the best, easiest setup using gear you already have. So we are now completely set up. We've got our audio going into the HDTX. We've got our video game console going into our capture box. We have our light coming in so we don't cast shadows on our face. And of course, we've got our live monitor right here so we can do a latency video game play so we don't have to worry about OBS. We've even got our webcam coming in here and our audio is matched. Negative 12 for our main mic, negative 35 for our game console. That should be perfect for live streaming. And now that we're all set up, I'm gonna play a little bit of Mario Brothers. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, I, I picked something up. What? I don't even... Nope, I, I just got hit. I'm dying. Well, that is our episode. We started with literally a bare desk, and by the end of it, we actually had a pretty good little live stream setup that I think would get us a couple of viewers, at least maybe one or two donations up there on our live stream. Remember, this is just a primer on how to get started. If you want to see more videos, though, about live streaming, drop it down in that comment section below and tell us what you want to learn about when it comes to OBS and possibly other live streaming aspects. If you really like this kind of content and wanna learn more about it every single week, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications. You can also find us on all social media platforms at DD Microphones. I'm Andrew from DD Video though. I'm not DD Video, that's not what we do. I'm Andrew from DD, thank you for watching.